everyone! Welcome to my Facebook Live this week. My name's Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Paper Craft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Great to have you all here. Thank you for jumping on, whether or not you're watching live or watching the replay or watching on YouTube later. I appreciate you coming along, so thank you so much for being here. So while I'm just um, waiting for everyone to jump on, I'll just call this up on my iPad so that I can see all of your comments. So just give me a moment and I'll bring that up. And let's see if I can find it. There we go. Okay. All right. So as you're jumping on, say hi so that I know that you're here and we can chat as I'm creating. And I've got a few things to tell you about today as well. So there's a few things coming up I wanted to share with you. Now, I was just looking up very quickly the um, on my computer just before I went live um, to see if there was, I was looking for a specific um, product to see if it was still available uh, because it's from the current annual catalogue. But no, it's gone. It's sold out. So um, it's one of the products that, well was retiring and now has retired by the look of it so um, yes I was going to tell you about that but it's gone now so I can't tell you about it but that's okay there's lots of other things um, still on the list as well I'll talk to you more about that in a moment but let me say hello to everyone first hi Tina Marie hi Kathleen great to have you here hi Linda Linda's visiting us too great to have you here it's exciting <laughs> How is everyone today on this fine sunny day here in Sydney? We've got beautiful weather today, although it's a little bit cool. I've got my cardi on today. Um, you have to be quick. Yes, you definitely do, Tina Marie, with those last chance products that are um, still available. If there's anything there um, that you would still like that you have on your wish list, go and grab them because they are selling out. Um, so I was going to talk about that a little bit further on, but we can talk about it now, which is all good. Uh, so yes, those last chance products that are still available, if you haven't had a look to see what's there, go there and have a look. Um, you can go to my online store. Let me give you my, um, oh, I'll hold this up. <laughs> so you can get to my online store either via my blog, just go to my blog and then click on shop, or you can go directly to my um, website, my Stampin' Up! website, and it also has a shop button as well, so you can click there. Either way, you'll get to my online store. Um, on my blog, I've got lots of um, creative inspiration there. I've got some other things there as well. You can subscribe to my newsletter through my blog as well. If you haven't already subscribed to my newsletter, I'd love for you to do that. Um, if you'd like to keep updated with Stampin' Up! news, my news, my upcoming classes, any specials that are happening or promotions, then go to my blog and at the very top on the right hand side, you'll see there's a subscribe to my newsletter button. And anybody that subscribes will get, or any new subscriptions, will get a free PDF tutorial um, from me. So go there and subscribe to my email newsletter. And while you're there as well, click over on the shop tab and go and have a little browse around my online store and have a look to see what is left in those last chance products. So when you go there um, to my online store, there'll be a, a promotion banner that comes up along the top and they, there's a few different ones and they'll scroll along. When you see the one that says last chance products, which I think is the first one that comes up, click on that and it takes you directly through to the um, the products that are on special at the moment or that are retiring. Um, if you can't find them that way, and I've just got my computer open beside me today, which I don't normally have when I'm live, but I was just looking something up as I said. Um, you can go to uh, shop, um, where is it? Let me see. Do, 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 do. Um, mm, 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 mm. You can click along the top. On the left hand side, there's tabs along the top and you along the top and you can click on sales and specials and then that'll take you that'll give you a little um, drop down box and it shows you the clearance rack as well which was refreshed last week um, and some of those things have already sold out too but there's still some available um, and then you've got the last chance product sales so oh hey Monique you're here this week too great to have you thanks for joining us 
Angie's here and Kathleen's here. Hi. Oh, I think I already said hello to you, Kathleen. Actually, hello again. <laughs> um, Angie said, it's sunny and nice. Yes, it is. It's lovely. I was sitting out there a little while ago um, in the sun with our little puppy, Callie, uh, a little bit earlier, actually. And um, yeah, it was lovely out there in the sun. It's a little bit cold here in my craft room. Oh, and Athena's here, still working. Shh. <laughs> it's great to have you, Athena, for as long as you can spend with us. Um, yeah, so um, how was everyone's weekend and week since I saw you last? Tell me what you've been up to. Hopefully you've had a little bit of um, me time in there, either crafting or doing something else. Oh, Angie says it's cold there in Melbourne. Yes. I would imagine it would be getting quite chilly down there now, Angie. It's a little bit, there's a little bit of a, um, a chill in the air up here now too. So I think we're heading into those cooler days, which I don't like so much. I prefer the warmth. <laughs> hey, Julie, great to have you here. Um, yes, and I've got, my niece has been down in um, Tasmania this past week and she said it's been freezing down there so yeah so I it doesn't surprise me that it's cold in Melbourne too. <laughs> ah Tina Marie has been making cards yay that's awesome love to hear about that and I've been seeing some of Tina Marie's cards as well um, they've been beautiful so she's been doing very well um and angie says she's putting away scrapbook pages that she's made for family ah oh, awesome very good i have been talking to um some of my team members about scrapbooking as well in the past week and it's really made me want to get back to it i haven't done any traditional scrapbooking for oh i don't even like to think how many years it's been it's been a while a long long while i moved on to doing the um pocket pages or I use the memories and more cards now and um, well I should say now I was I haven't done them even for a while my memories and more cards have mostly been used for um, making uh, greeting cards rather than using them for memory keeping lately which is great you can use them for both um, but yeah I really need to get back into my scrapbooking I never actually even finished my children's albums how bad is that and that's their baby albums <laughs> pages oh sorry I just bumped the table with my knee it's pages missing in there or well, not missing I've got them blanked out and I've, some of them I've got the photos in there ready to do the layouts but I never got back to them to finish the layouts so time just gets away doesn't it one day one day I'll get back to it um, so tell me who of you are scrapbookers and who are just card makers or do you do both let me know in the comments what you prefer um, Kathleen said she's been doing some scrapbooking over the weekend as well and went to the caravan show during the week. Oh, cool. That sounds like fun. I grew up caravanning and camping. So, um, yeah, I used to really, really enjoy all of that. Monique said she's been making, um, new products for her website. Awesome. And customer customized tumblers. Oh, that sounds cool took time out for her personal training sessions. Oh, that sounds great. So you've been having some me time in there as some as well as creative time, Monique. That's awesome. Love to hear that. So Angie does both. She does scrapbooking and card making. Fantastic. Um, Monique says she just does cards now. Yep. Um, Julie said that's what I need to get back to I've started an album for my boys but have to get back to it because I love it yeah so interestingly since I started as a demonstrator with Stampin Up um, a few years ago so it's been four or well, more than four and a half years now I'll be coming up to five years this year I always said I would do some scrapbooking classes but do you know what? I've been so busy with all the card making classes that I actually haven't got back to my idea of getting into the scrapbooking classes. But I really should do that because I've actually got a lot of scrapbookers in my um, community. So, yeah, it's one thing that is still on my to do list. <laughs> Keep reminding me, everybody. Eventually, hopefully I'll get to it. 
Um, Angie said she finished an album yesterday. Oh, awesome. But have another 12 to do. Oh my goodness, Angie. That is so many. Wow. So how long, Angie, does it take you typically like to complete a whole album? And how many like pages are you putting into an album? I'd be interested to know. Um, Kathleen does scrapbooking plus cards, but loves um, memories from scrapbooking. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I really love um, reminiscing over the old days and the old, well, I shouldn't say old days, but you know, the days gone by, the past, um, from my past and my family's past and my children, you know, with them growing up and things like that. I do love reminiscing about all of that and scrapbooking is fantastic for that. Um, scrapbooking and memory keeping, whichever form it takes and the way that you do it. Um, Athena does more card making. Yeah. Um, Oh, Angie has nine children. Wow, Angie. I didn't realize you had so many children. My goodness. You're a very busy mum. <laughs> uh, so she, Angie puts 20 plastic sleeves in her albums. So that would be double-sided, I would imagine. So that would be, um, that would be 40 layouts. Wow. And how long does it take you to do a whole album normally, Angie? Or are you doing other things in between as well? I guess it's, um, yeah, I remember when I used to um, do my traditional scrapbooking, it could take me six hours just to do one layout. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I kind of put it on the back burner when I got back into card making because I originally started as a card maker. Um, that's how I got into paper crafting was through card making. Then I was introduced through the card making group I was in back, then when Jake was three and he's now 24 so that's 21 years ago um, then those ladies introduced me to scrapbooking and then then what happened after that oh actually no I must have started card making a bit before that because I was already card making before I met those ladies Anyway, then they introduced me to scrapbooking. So then I left card making and did scrapbooking for a while and put my card making on the side. And then when I started working, I think I didn't do anything for a little while. Then I got back into um, card making and then did a little bit of scrapbooking along the way, then found the pocket page memory keeping and thought, oh, that's an easier way and I can still write my stories and you know um, keep my memories. So then I went that way. And then I just went back fully into card making and yeah, no memories have been kept for a while. <laughs> I really need to get back into that, don't I? Um, yeah, so 40 layouts, Angie said, and she's been doing scrapbooking pages the last couple of days. She's made 38 pages, 38 pages in a couple of days, Angie. That's amazing. Well done. Wow, I aspire to be like Angie. <laughs> I want to be able to do that many pages that quickly. Well done. Um, she's got her cards and kits made for her classes for the next month. Oh, wow, you're very organized, Angie. Well done. Fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, it's been fun talking about um, scrapbooking and memory keeping and yeah, it's, it's really a great thing to, um, and I think to these days in the digital age, we take so many photos um, and we tend not to always print them. I know on my camera reel or camera roll on my phone, I have got over 25,000 photos that go back to, I'm not sure how many years they go back. Now, some of them are projects so they're not probably ones that I would print and there's a lot of the dogs so there's a lot of Molly there's a lot now of Callie um, there's not as many probably family photos that I would print there's some here and there but um, I really need to go back and print them and actually yesterday do you know what my husband bought me a um, external hard drive it's a four terabyte hard drive because my computer, although I don't store all of my photos on my computer, I've got quite a few, but I've got a lot of documents on there, but my hard drive is full um, and I use a Mac, an Apple Mac. And um, so, yeah, so I said to him, I need something because 
you know, um, I've got to store so many things. So maybe what I might do is download some of those photos and get them onto the external hard drive. And then I don't have to worry about losing them. And then I can eventually get some printed. So I always worry about, uh, well, mine are all in the cloud. So I guess if I, if my device breaks or something, I can still access them. So that's all good, but still really need to print them. Don't I <laughs> keep asking me from time to time, everyone, how are you going with those photos, Mandy? <laughs> I might need the reminder. <laughs> uh, so Angie said the cutoff from card making. Oh, the cutoffs from your card making you use on your pages. That's a great idea. Angie, when she die cuts, she cuts extras to use on her pages. Great tip. Fantastic. Oh, Monique said, do I print my photos at home or at a store? Um, so I used to get them all printed at a store and I went, used to go to different stores and then the quality changed and then I go to a different store, blah, blah, blah. Then I started printing them from home um, and I was getting quite good quality, but my printer is now a fair bit old. We've had that particular printer for a while. I've been saying I want to upgrade it. The quality I'm getting now on it, although I use the specific paper and the ink for that printer, like the genuine ink, it's not getting, I'm not getting as good um, quality with my photo printing and it works out a lot more expensive anyway. So I guess that's another reason why I, I sound like I'm making excuses now. <laughs> It's another reason why I'm not printing them now. I'm only printing as I go as I need one or two here or there for different things. But um, but yeah, I, sh I should go and get a whole stack of them printed. Oops, hang on a sec. Let me just... Um, and Angie replied to Monique. Angie said she does both. So she prints hers at a store and also at home. Yeah. Oh, thanks for the inspiration, Angie. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I can't believe how quickly you're smashing them out. That's awesome. Hey, Jenny. Yes, we are all well. Oh, Brooke's sore throat's come back a little bit, actually. She caught it from me. She was sick all last week, had to take time off work. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Mine is fine. I just got a frog because I'm talking too much. Um, but yes, her sore throat has come back a bit, so she's... Um, wearing her mask again at the moment, but she's got a couple of days off work. Um, it is cause the calibration of the store, not doing it. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe. A couple of times too, I've gone to print them at the stores and you have to download them from your phone. And some of them have particular apps that you have to use and, and it, I think the last time I did it, I don't remember where, and I probably wouldn't say anyway, um, but it was a big drama and my phone wouldn't sync properly with their app or whatever it was. So yeah, I, it was a real hassle. So it kind of put me off too. Um, you can change the quality of your printing on your computer. Yes, yes, true. Um, Tina Marie said, if you print a whole stack, then you'll feel overwhelmed with needing to spread scrapbook them well yes and no but i also have photo boxes so i have a lot of photos already stored in photo boxes so yeah even if i didn't scrapbook them all i think i'd still be happier that i had them even in a photo box and interestingly because we just had john's dad's funeral um back in february we had to go through all of their photos um, but a lot of their photos too were on slides. So we had to go through all of their slides and then convert them to photos. Um, and it really made me think about my memory keeping because I thought, yeah, like years down the track, our kids or our grandkids might want to know about our history and might want to see photos from, you know, these times. So I really should get on to that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Monique said all the stores have apps, but also if you have an Apple, it is because of Apple cloud issues. Ah, okay. That's good to know. Um, you know, if you need anything, Pete or myself can look after you. Ah, thanks Monique. Plus we make sure the printer is calibrate, calibration is done every week. Ah, awesome. Cool. Um, and Tina Marie said ditto for her. It was a hassle for me at my particular store. Yeah, maybe we're going to the same store, Tina Marie, we might need to find a different store. Maybe we need to go to Monique. <laughs> maybe Monique can help us. 
<laughs> yes. Hey, we should go and do that together one day, Tina Marie. Tina Marie, we'll go and get our photos done together. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let me give you some news. I'm going to close down my computer now. Um, it's beside me and it's still open, but it's going to distract me. So I'm going to close that down so that I don't keep looking there. But yes, if you haven't, as I was saying, if you haven't already checked out the Last Chance products on the Last Chance promotion, go and have a look and see what's there. There's discounted products. There's products available that are currently available at a discount with a uh, as a bundle. And they, some of those are carrying over into the new catalogue, but they won't be available as a bundle then. So then you have to pay the individual prices and you don't get that 10% discount. So if any of the bundles are there that you like, make sure you grab them now too. Okay, don't wait because, um, as I said, things are selling out and they may or may not be available in the new catalogue, especially the bundles as well. Um, yeah, no worries, Monique. Thank you. Okay, so if you haven't already seen this, here is our beautiful new annual catalog, which is coming out very, very soon. Very exciting. Now, I have already ordered catalogs for all of my customers who have ordered with me in the last 12 months. Um, now, if you haven't ordered with me before and you're new to Stampin' Up or you don't have a demonstrator that you're working with, let me know because I'd love to send you a new catalogue. I've got a box of catalogues here, so I've got some available to send out. Um, for my customers, you should start to receive yours um, very soon because they're coming direct to you from Stampin' Up. And I believe that Stampin' Up was starting to send them out last at the end of last week. So they should start turning up in the next couple of weeks. So let me know when you get yours. Um, and I know that you will love it. There is so much beautiful product in here. Now, I'm not allowed to show you the inside just yet. Not until it goes live on the 4th of May. Um, and then I'll be able to show you the inside. But at the moment, you can just see the front cover. But look how beautiful even this suite is. Like, isn't it just so pretty? So beautiful. Um, now, if you don't want to wait until the 4th of May, because 4th of May is when customers are able to get these products, but if you don't want to wait until 4th of May, then you can join my team now and order some of these products right now from the demonstrator pre-order. So as demonstrators, it's one of the perks that we can get some of the products early, not the entire catalogue, um, but there are some that we can get early. And when you join now, you can actually put those new products into your starter kit if you would like to. Um, if you want to choose um, current catalogue products, you can choose them as well, or you can do a bit of both, whatever you like. And then you'll get 20% discount on all your future purchases to order more things from the new catalogue. So then you'll actually get the discount rather than giving me the discount, uh, giving me the commission. You'll get to keep that as your own discount. 20% discount so it's awesome so if you would love to um, get your hands on some of those beautiful products and gra grab a great discount take advantage of that let me know um, and I can give you more information about that or you can go straight to my blog and I do have a join button there too that you can go there click on that and it'll take you straight through to um, to join with my team now if you have more questions though if you're unsure please feel free to ask me because I would like you to be um, have all of your questions answered and be completely sure before joining okay so just don't feel pressured or anything but just feel that you can ask me anything that you want to ask me all right. Now, when you do join Stampin' Up, you don't need to sell, okay? A lot of people get hung up on that and they worry that they're going to have to sell to people, but you absolutely don't. You can just purchase the products for yourself. Of course, there is the business opportunity there for you if you would like to take that opportunity. Um, and I'd certainly support you in that if that's what you want to do. But if not, then that's fine. I will still be happy to have you as part of my team and for you to have a, uh, be a happy shopper and get that wonderful discount for yourself. That's what I love the most. Um, and joining Stampin' Up, um, getting that starter kit is the best deal in the catalogue because you just have so many benefits as a demonstrator. So I won't talk any more about that. Oh, I will let you know how much it is though. So um, especially keep this in mind if you are thinking about putting in a large order because it's only $169 to join, but you actually get to choose up to $235 worth of product. 
and still only pay $169. So you get that additional $66 for free, plus you get free shipping on your um, starter kit. And then you get that beautiful discount after then as well. So it's fantastic. It's a great offer. Um, let me know if you'd like some more details on that and I'd be happy to share that with you. Hey, Tracy, great to have you with us today. Fantastic. Jenny says she's waiting. She's waiting for her new catalogue. Oh, it should be there to you soon, Jenny. You're going to love it. You're absolutely going to love it. Um, yes. So let me tell you now um, about my paper share. So the new catalogue, we have um, lots and lots of new, beautiful designer series paper, which is our patterned papers that are coming out. Um, and I'm running a paper share. So I need four people per share. And basically what you get is a quarter pack of all of those new designer series papers that are coming out. Um, so you get a quarter pack. So it's a cheaper way of getting a little bit of all of the papers rather than having to outlay and get a whole pack of each of them. Um, then you have lots and lots and lots of beautiful paper to make your beautiful card making and scrapbooking projects with. And um, then that way too, it's much more affordable. So if you would like more information about my paper share, let me know and I can send you an information sheet and registration form. And then um, they will all be ordered on, all of those papers will be ordered for you on the 4th of May. Um, the deadline can't remember the cutoff date actually and I didn't I haven't written it down on my notes here uh, but I did advertise it last week in the last few days actually so if you go just um, after my live finishes just scroll down a few of my posts and you'll see my advertisement there for my paper share um, that's got all the information there so check that out yeah I, I can't believe I didn't write down that date <laughs> I thought I was doing so well with all my notes today. That's all right. So yes, um, so that is great. Now, also too, I'm going to be having an in-color club. So you might remember last week, oh, I meant to grab those cards. Hang on one sec, let me grab one of those cards. This one is on top. Remember last week I showed um, showed you the in colors and I did an unboxing last week. If you missed it, go back and look for my video from last Monday and I did an unboxing of all of the new products that I got in my pre-order. Plus I showed the brand new in color products. Now I'm going to be running an in color and, and I showed these cards too. I've got one in every color for the in colors so you can see the beautiful colors. This one is um, Fresh Freesia. So I'm going to be running an in color club and I've just got everything um, finalized this morning for that. So that'll be posted in the next day or two um, to register for that. What an in color club is, um, is all of the products that are available in the in color club um, will be available to you to purchase over five months. So what I do is every month I choose one of the colors. So for instance, Fresh Freesia. So then in the color range of Fresh Freesia, um, you'll get the, uh, the ink, the ink refill. You'll get, I'm trying to remember now, I don't have a copy printed out. Um, you'll get the, what else is there? The blends, the Stampin' Blends. Um, You'll get the ribbon. Oh, I've got it right in front of me. Why don't I look here? <laughs> um, you'll also get um, some additional items. So you'll get cardstock. You'll get the designer series paper. You'll get the um, gems as well. And then for each month, there'll be a different color. And so you'll get the products for the different, um, you'll get all of the products in those different colors each month or in that one particular color each month. And then by the end of the five months, you have all five, you have all of the collection in the five colors. Um, and you'll have, you'll have the range then. And it's um, a great way of being able to collect all of the in color products. So um, look out for that for my in color club. There's more going to be more information. Um, there's going to be some free gifts for those that do the full five months um, and there'll be a registration form 
um, and all the information will be there. But look out for that. That'll be up in the next couple of days. I'm really excited. It's the first time I've run an In Colour Club. Paper shares I do with every new catalogue. So I've done that before. But the In Colour Club, that's, this is my first one. So I'm super excited. Um, and you can join that um, uh, really soon. So, And then as soon as that catalogue goes live, I'll be putting in that first order for the first colour collection of um, all of those products. So super, super exciting. All right, now let me tell you, today is the last day uh, to register for my Nothing's Better Than online class. Now this is one that I have run before, um, but I thought while the products are still, the products are gonna be available in the um, new catalog, but they're not going to be bundled. And um, as well as that, the designer series paper that I used on these projects is retiring. So you won't be able to get it in the future. So I wanted to just show you just briefly what the cards are that are in the, um, I'll just give you a quick sneak peek that are in the class. Today's the last day to register for it. Um, then I'm closing it off and I won't be offering this one again. Okay, so if you missed it the first time, this is your um, last chance to, to grab it. So this is the first card, really super cute and fun, bright colors. This is the next one. And then we've got this one, which is a fun fold card. So we've got, oh, actually that way. I didn't open it the proper way, <laughs> that way. So we've got those three cards that are in my class. So have a look for that in the events section um, here on my business page, you'll find that. And if you would like to do that class, then you've got until nine o'clock tonight to register and um, purchase the products. Now, if you already have those products, the Nothing's Better Than bundle, you can substitute for other products um, to the same value as the at least the stamp set. And then you can still get those kits for them to making those pro for making those projects. So you just need to let me know if you are substituting products though. But all the information is in the um, event. So there's even ordering links there to make it easy for you. You just click on there and that takes you straight through to order those products. Or if you're substituting, it just take you straight through to my online store. But check it out. Um, last day, super, super cute, super fun um, projects. And a little bit yummy too with all that chocolate. Every time I look at it, it makes me want to eat chocolate. <laughs> okay. Um, my next Technique Club is coming up on the 25th. We're going to be playing with Joseph's Coat Technique, um, which is super fun. I had so much fun designing those projects for my Technique Club. Now, my Technique Club, I have opened up to anyone to join in any month. So you can come along any month now and join just as a guest um, in any of the months that you would like to. You just don't get, uh, you don't get the subscription benefits or the member benefits. So, but you can, if there's one that you really like, you can just join in that month um, or you can subscribe for three months. So three consecutive months and then you'll get um, member benefits. So you get added freebies and things like that. Um, so yeah, so look out for my technique club. The one coming up with Joseph's coat um, has closed now and the kits have already been sent out for that one But look out for next month to see what my next month technique will be that we'll be focusing on every month It's something different and it's super fun and um, Sometimes we get a little bit messy a little bit inky, but um, that's all the more fun, isn't it? So look out for that um, And I can yeah if you would like to subscribe for the three months Just let me know too because I can send you a subscription form or registration form for that Otherwise, you can just join in each month. Um, yeah, and just let me know. But look out for the, or the events will always be on my business page. And if you're a member of my workshop and classes group as well, I share it to there too. So there's two different places that you can see it. All right, and of course, all of my classes, unfortunately, are only available for Australian residents. So I'm sorry for those of you that may be, um, that may watch me from overseas and, and think that sounds pretty exciting. I do have, however, some past technique classes, um, class tutorials for sale on my blog. So if you go to my blog and have a look and up the top, you'll see um, tutorials. Click on there to have a look and see what the tutorials are. Now, even if 
um, the stamp sets have retired or the products have retired because it's a technique based class you can basically use that technique with any um, stamp set or die set or whatever so um, yeah so definitely go to my blog let me show you again Mandy's paper craft creations this one here dot blogspot.com so go there and check out my and there's information there about my technique club as well but also about my um, tutorials that I have there so yeah check that out okay so I am ready to start crafting I've been talking for a really really long time what time is it oh yeah really long time <laughs> I'm gonna pop my notes to the side um, now today I got an order delivered which I'd kind of forgotten what was in there I was thinking oh yeah it's just there were there were things that I was stocking up on some cardstock some more blending brushes because I used all of my blending brushes that I had got some brand new ones now to get inky I ordered two more sets because the ones that I had I used um, for my Joseph's coat technique and I wanted some more to use with other colors as well and in there I forgot that I had ordered I don't know why I forgot but I forgot momentarily that I had ordered the brand new bouquet of hope paper pumpkin kit so guess what we're gonna play with today because I had planned to play with something else and um, I was planning it last night and everything and thought great I'm gonna whip something up this morning with my plan and I had my sketch ready and everything and then this arrived and I thought oh change of plans so the other project will do next week so I'm gonna tip my camera down we're gonna open this up it's still even in the shrink wrap I haven't even opened it yet so I'm gonna open it with you all today and you can have a look to see what's in it and then we'll make some of the projects alrighty so let me get the camera ready to tip down and then we can start crafting alrighty all right now I don't have any grid paper to oh I can grab some grid paper from there I was just thinking if I need to stamp I don't have any grid paper out but I can grab some all right so what I'm gonna do is I will cover up the camera and I'll tip it down to my desktop so bear with me for one moment and you I'll give you my blue screen and we will get everything ready Just bear with me for a moment it might sound a little bit clunky while I do all of this And there is a reason I cover my camera up because, oops, now let's just move that one, because you would get terribly motion sick if I didn't. Because there's a lot of movement that happens when I'm readjusting my stand. Okay. Alrighty. Let's see. How we're looking, we'll get some lights. And the other day on the weekend, before I was, I went to film my, um, my technique class, or oh, it wasn't on the weekend, actually it was before the weekend, and I had to tighten up all of the screws on my lights here because they've got different parts to them. And um, they kept falling down. So I had to tighten up all the screws on them and now they are lovely and tight and stay where they're meant to stay okay so I do have a host code for this month too there it is there I'll move that down a little bit so you can see that so if you are oh I need to print a new one of these I got some ink on this the other day I completely forgot I meant to print a new one before today but when I was doing my um, my filming the other day my Joseph's coat um, technique I splattered some ink on this one here so I need to um, make a new one but I forgot but that's okay we'll get to it all right just straighten that camera up a little bit all righty so let's open this why are we over that way so far um, what I was going to say to you too is every month I have a new host code so when you're shopping with me in my online store um, be sure to use my host code and so then that way I can send you a thank you gift um, when your orders over $50 and I love to look after my customers um, and spoil them so 
allow me to spoil you and be sure to use my host code so that I can. <laughs> um, all right, let me just check these comments here. Uh, oh, Tina's excited about the paper pumpkin. Awesome. Oh, Judy said it's dangerous to show her more kits. <laughs> they are lovely. Um, blue ombre today. Yes, whenever I put my tape over my camera, it, we always get that blue ombre. <laughs> uh, and Judy said I sure do spoil my customers. Uh, thank you, Judy. I like to look after my customers because, you know, you all support me, so I like to show my appreciation. All right, so when you get your kit, they come shrink-wrapped like this to keep everything protected inside. How cute is this box? I love the paper pumpkin boxes. They're so cute. All right, let's have a look and see what we have today. Oh, awesome. Okay, so we have got, let me just tuck that under there so it stays put. We have got a little Mossy Meadow ink spot, which is awesome. We have got a stamp set. Oh, that's a lovely stamp set. Look at that. That's really pretty. We've got a big floral bloom there. We've got some little flowers and little leaves. And we've got some lovely sentiments. Sorry for your loss. Always in my... I'll always, oh, I'll always be there for you. And this one says, sharing in your sorrow, thinking of you and wishing I could be there to hold your hand. Oh, that's beautiful. So this particular kit, yes, blue paper, Tina Marie, blue tissue paper. So this particular kit is one that's been designed for people that uh, might be going through a really hard time, they might be unwell, they might be, you know, just having a really tough time in life, they may have had a loss um, as well. And so this kit is designed um, for those people so that you can send beautiful cards because, you know, isn't it sometimes hard to make a card for, say there's a, a loss, you have a friend or a family member that has a loss, um, and sometimes it's hard, I'm going to keep my tissue paper, because I'll keep that for um, using for something else, and sometimes when you've, um, you've got to try and think of making a card for someone who's, who's had a loss and you want to do it quickly and get it off to them. It's really hard, and I find that sympathy cards are one of the hardest cards to make, um, and so this kit is perfect for that. And even just with the I'm thinking of you as well, for anyone that might be, you know, just having a bad time going through, you know, stuff in life. And um, so, yeah, so this is what this kit is intended for. All right, so then you get all of your products in here on a backing board and your instructions are on the other side. So let's... And again, all wrapped in plastic to protect them with a board to keep everything nice and um, straight so nothing gets bent. So this is the kit and these are the three beautiful projects. Really, really pretty. Okay, so let's have a look and see. So we've got our instruction sheet in here showing us how to put together all of the cards. Now, they, these ones are really easy to put together. Anyone can do them. Um, so even if you haven't made cards before, you'll be able to do this. Now, the only thing that isn't in the kit is a block, a clear block. So you will need a D-sized block. If you don't already have a block, you can order them through my online store as well. Um, and the reason that these kits don't have blocks in them, the paper pumpkin ones, is to keep the price down for you because a lot of people that do buy the kits are seasoned crafters and already have blocks, so they don't need another block. Um, but if you are new, you can always purchase the blocks separately. Okay, um, and a D-sized block will fit all of the stamps. Let me just double check as I say that. That one will just fit on a D-block, just. In fact, I might even use a bigger one for that one, but that will just squeeze on diagonally on a D block. Yep. Um, okay, well, I don't even know if we're using that stamp in these projects because it looks like a lot of this is already pre-done for us. So you've got your instructions here in English, French, German, and Japanese. And if you don't have a ruler, 
down the bottom you do have measurements as well now it is in inches but that's okay because in the instructions it gives you the measurements in inches and in centimeters so if you're measuring using the um, the measurement here then just use your um, inches okay so there is all your instructions so you've got images for your instructions you've got step-by-step um, -step instructions there too and then over the back it tells you what's in your kit all right and it's got um, the photos of the original ones there and then it's got some other examples of how the kit has been used in other ways so this kit will also coordinate with some of the designer series paper that you might recognize if I show you that a bit closer some of this designer series paper was available um, previously and I think was that the celebration paper or was that the mini catalog paper I can't remember now um, but coordinates with some of that other paper that we've had as well so but I'm sure that it will probably coordinate with lots of papers that you have in your stash too all right so let's have a look what we've got here so we've got our adhesive dots if you don't already have your own adhesive there are adhesive dots in here I like to use my own adhesive but the dots are there if you don't have any we've got some beautiful twine here this looks like it's old olive and we've got some black sequins which are adhesive backed I love adhesive backed sequins makes life much easier you've got a big sheet of Stampin dimensionals which is our 3d foam which is fantastic then you've got your beautiful envelopes. Oh, we've got some pieces in between our envelopes there to keep them safe. Let's put them aside for the moment. Oh, look, we've got lots of different patterns inside our envelopes. So we've got three. So there's nine cards in this kit, three of three different designs. And we've got three different envelopes that coordinate with the, sorry, I'm going off camera there. We've got three different envelopes there that coordinate with the three different um, cards. So they're really beautiful. It's always nice to have pretty envelopes. Um, we've got some foil elements here. These are gold foil elements. They're really beautiful. They're like a gold doily, like a gold floral doily. Let me put one down on my desk so you can see it. That one's got a little bit of powder. They have a little bit of um, like a powdery finish on them that is just from the... Um, the manufacturing so you can just rub that off just be careful that you don't scratch the center of that although I think we're putting a sentiment over it anyway so that's all good they are just beautiful so we've got three of those for our three cards then we've got some sentiments in the different languages here that are stickers these are thick cardstock stickers so that's great they're already there already pre-done for us and we've got some card bases again these card bases um, they are pre-scored for you now these ones look like they are in the American inches size um, the American cardstock size is um, letter size whereas here in Australia and in Europe we use A4 um, these are just a little bit shorter and a little bit wider than what we use in A4 um, but they do fit the coordinating envelopes that come with them. So, so that's all good. So that's one of them. I'll pop that one up there. And then we've got, oh, these are pretty. Oh, they're even more pretty on this side. Look at that. Beautiful vellum overlays with this beautiful gold um, leafy edge border. They're very pretty. Love them. Some more card bases. Oops, we've got more things inside there. This one is just pink. Uh, this looks like, is that Rococo Rose? I don't know. Let's have a look and see what are our coordinating colors in here. Does it tell us? Uh, it might tell us on the back, actually. Coordinating colors. Basic Black, Bumblebee, Just Jade, Merry Merlot, Mossy Meadow and Rococo Rose. Oh, awesome. I love Rococo Rose, but sadly it's retiring. Very sad about that one. It's one of my favorite colors. And then we've got this one. This one looks like Merry Merlot. This is pretty. Look at that card front. Beautiful. So all of the cards are white on the inside when you fold them. 
so you can just write straight on them. We've got some pop-out florals and some little border pieces. These are just pre-printed die-cut cardstock, so you can just adhere them with your um, little adhesive dots or your own embellish, uh, your own adhesive, and some border strips. So there's three of them. And then we've got some sentiment labels. Awesome. And this one is like one of our old punches that we had, which is also retiring. Um, so yeah, and then just some rectangles. So beautiful. All right, so let's lay everything out and just see what we have. All right, so if we lay out, I think this will be the easiest way to do it. See what we've got. So we've got that one, that one, and let's put the green one in the middle and that one. All right, so our three different cards. Then these ones go with the Rococo Rose. These ones go with the Rococo Rose. These ones go with the Mary Merlot. And then these ones go with that one as well. And then this one, Oh, these go, okay, so the large blooms, let's pop them out. I'm going to be organized with this kit. I'm going to section everything into their little kits. So the big flowers go with this one and the bumblebee little accent there. It goes with that one. And then the little flowers, they all go with this one. So let's pop them out already. And then we'll have everything all organized, ready to just put these together. Oh, Callie will be happy because Callie loves any little pieces that have had die cuts or punched pieces out of them. And they are just her um, most fun treasures that she loves. <laughs> I saved them all for her now. <laughs> um, oh, Tina Marie said, I'm amazing the way I know all my colors. Well, I... I usually do every so often I'll forget one but I usually do but it comes with a lot of practice I'm using them all the time and looking at them all the time so I guess I've just gotten used to which one's which <laughs> all right I'm just gonna pop these here so you can see them so just organize all of these and then we'll put a few of these together might see if we've got time to do one of each I think they won't take too long Famous last words is another one for Callie. She'll be happy. And so I think we are only doing sentiment stamps on two. And the other floral stamps, you've just got them as extras. We don't actually do any floral stamping on any of these because we've got all these little punch outs. So that's awesome. Then you've got all those additional, um, you've got those additional stamps there. As you can see, these little pop-outs pop out really easily. Now, my suggestion with the sentiments is to leave them in their backing piece while you stamp them. Don't punch them out ahead of time because they are easier to punch when you've got that extra supporting um, cardstock around them. They, they just don't move and, and things like that. So we'll keep them in there before we um, uh, while we do the stamping. All right, so we've got all of our bits there together. Okay, so let's pop this one to the side and this one to the side. And we'll do one of these ones first because I think this one's going to be the quickest one, hopefully. Okay, oh, I didn't separate the envelopes. The envelopes, so the green envelopes go with this one. Okay. The pink envelopes actually go with the Just Jade ones. How pretty is that together? That looks beautiful. So that goes with those ones. And then the Bumblebee, was it Bumblebee? I think it was, it looks like Bumblebee to me. Uh, yes, Bumblebee. Bumblebee goes with this one. So that's a set. Awesome. Okay. And we need our 
stamps. Alrighty, so I'll just pop the envelopes to the side with the other card bases for the moment and we'll do this one. And we just need one of these. Oh, I've got one there. And we're going to need one sentiment label. All right, so to begin with, I'm just going to fold my card base in half. It's already pre-scored. So I'm just going to fold it in half and then I'm going to use my bone folder just to run along the edge there. Now, if you don't have a bone folder to run along the edge, they are a fantastic tool to have though, may I say. But if you don't have one, you could even use the edge of your block just to run along the edge of your card there. It doesn't doesn't um, glide quite as nicely as a bone folder, but it works. You could use the flat part too. Just helps to um, get your folded edge there to sit down nicely. All right, so we've got that. We need to adhere this to there. I should read the instructions, shouldn't I? I mean, I'm just looking at the picture. And pretty much, I think with these ones, you could probably put them together just with the picture. But let's check the instructions in case I miss something because oftentimes I do. Yes, I would have missed that bit. Okay, there is twine on this one too. Here's the twine and there's embellishments. So lucky I checked. Let's have a look. So to keep your stickers from ripping, remove the negative backing. Yep. Okay, so um, we'll get to that bit. Um, which one are we doing here? So we're doing four, five, six, uh, four, six, seven, eight. I'm just having a look to see. And then we've got three there as well with the stamping. Um, mm -hmm, yep, 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 yep. Stamp sentiment on die cut labels. Okay, we'll do that first. We're going to stamp our sentiment. Um, adhere the gold foil piece vellum and die cut piece to the card base. Okay, so it's telling us to do multiple cards at a time. It's giving us some multiple instructions at a time, but we're just gonna do them one at a time. Adhere the gold foil piece, vellum, and die cut piece to the card base using the adhesive dots. Layer thinking of you stickers, that's for the other one. Cut 15 inches of mossy meadow linen thread Tie in a bow and adhere to the center of the gold foil piece with adhesive dots. Okay, and then adhere the stamped labels and floral bouquet. Adhere the gold stamped, okay, that's for this one. Adhere the stamped label, yep. And adhere the sequence to the card. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so we are going to stamp our sentiment. Then we'll adhere everything we'll do it as the instructions tell us to now a tip with these stamps when you get them being that they are photopolymer it's really important to clean them before you use them because they come with a bit of um it's, it's almost like a um greasy sort of film it's not really greasy but it's kind of like a film over the stamps um, from the manufacturing of them and if you try and ink them up before cleaning them um, you may not get a really nice, oh, hey, Robin, how are you going? Good to have you here. Um, you may not get a really nice crisp image. So good to clean them before you use them. I'm using the sentiment that says, um, sorry for your loss. And just double checking that that is the one that they're using. Yep, that's the one. Okay, so let's pop that on our block. So I'll just pop that down on the desk and then pick that up with my block. And then I'm going to use my Simply Chamois and I'm just going to give that a really good clean. Now this is going to, it might bump the camera. Um, oh, no worries, Judy. That's okay. All right, I'll see you on the replay. All good. Um, so this is going to be a bit bumpy and a bit squeaky, but I'm going to give it a really, really good clean. I'm going to make sure I remove all of that manufacturing um, residue that's on there. Now, we do have Stampin' Mist. However, um, Stampin' Up! does not recommend using Stampin' Mist on photopolymer because it can, over time, break down the polymer. So um, it's up to you if you use it, but it's um, not advised by Stampin' Up! So that's why I'm just using um, the chamois. All right, and then once you've done that, dry your stamp off onto your paper. 
Make sure that's nice and dry before you try picking up your ink. Now I've got a little, um, the little Mossy Meadow ink spot does come in the pack, but I do have my own Mossy Meadow, which I'm going to use instead. So let me get that out. So I've got a big one. You'll get this little one in your kit, okay? All right. So we're gonna be stamping our sentiment going down. So normally with this label, um, I used to always use my label going that way, but this time we're actually gonna turn it so that it's going long ways. Or, yeah, landscape, um, portrait. I was gonna say landscape. And also an added thing is I'm just gonna pop my stamp and pierce mat underneath here as well to make sure that I'm getting a good um, cushioned surface beneath my um, label that I'm stamping. There we go, beautiful. All right, now we're gonna need three of those, so why don't I just stamp all three of them now? And then that will save me from stamping the others later. They'll be all ready to go when I'm ready to put together all of the other cards. Beautiful. See, and because I cleaned that stamp, that's come up beautifully. Okay, and we'll give our, um, our stamp a clean now that we've finished using it. There we go. Good. Now, that sheet of um, adhesive and the sheet of dimensionals, I'm gonna save them, and I'm gonna use ones that I've already got. So let me see, where are my dimensionals? There we go. So I'll get out my sheet of dimensionals that I already had started. And I'm going to use my um, stamp and seal today too. All right, so we've got our stamping done for this card. Now, what was the next step? Did the instructions say? The next step, I think, was just to adhere the gold foil down. Adhere the gold foil um, oh, and then we've got to cut 15 inches of thread. Okay, so let's adhere this down. And this is just getting adhered to the center. So I'm just using some of my stamp and seal. You can use whichever adhesive you like, or you can use the adhesive that came in the kit. Just adhere that in the middle. There we go. Oh, Tina Marie was saying for doing your um, fold, if you don't have a bone folder, you can also use the handle of your scissors as well. That's a great tip too. Yeah, you can just run them along. Just be careful they don't have any sharp bits on them so that you don't scratch your cardstock when you're doing that. What else did I miss? Let me just scroll back and see if I missed any other. Oh, before earlier, Judy said she's closing her eyes. Too many pretty florals and pink. <laughs> She does love her florals. I think we all do, don't we? All right, so that's it here. Now we have to cut our um, linen trim. So let's take out our embellishments and our trim and we need 15 inches. So let's use the measurements on here. Okay, so we can do 15 inches. So we've got nine, oops, let's do that again, nine and six makes 15. There we go. Let's trim that and it said to tie a bow. How big a bow does it want us to create? A oh, pretty big bow, okay. So let's find the center and alrighty, go a bit out from the center and we'll tie a big bow. And the idea with this bow is that either end of the bow will show, whoops, will show from behind the label when we put the sentiment label down. So we want a fairly large bow on this one. Oh, this ribbon, you know what? See how this ribbon is really, really, or this twine, I should say, is really, really curly from being on that roll? I'm just going to use my bone folder to straighten it out a bit because it is being difficult to tie. There we go. So I just run that along my bone folder, between my bone folder and my thumb, and it takes out the heavy kinks 
Still might be a little bit kinky, but not as, or a little bit kinked, I should say. Um, not as bad as what it was. There we go. That's better. That made it much easier to tie. Okay. And then the idea is to tie a really large bow so that, let's move that out of the way, so that it shows top and bottom of the, you can do it, is it that, is that the right way how it's done? Yeah, that's how they've done it. So I'm going to put mine at a slight angle and I'm going to pop one piece over there. You could really do this bow in different ways as well if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, all right. And then with the sentiment label, is that popped up on dimensionals or is that stuck flat? What do they do then? Um, yep, yeah, stamped label with dimensionals. I thought it would be. All right, so then we'll just pop out our labels very carefully. There we go. And we're going to pop that over there. So I don't want to put a dimensional right in the middle because I've got the knot of my bow just there. We want the dimensionals to be either side of that. So I'll just use my take your pick tool. And I think I'll only probably need two on this one. One at the top and one at the bottom. And I'm going to have my, just make sure that your bow can be seen. I'm putting mine at a little bit of an angle here. I might make that a bit bigger. There we go, like so. I might have my tail coming down there, my other tail going up there, and then adhere that in the middle. There we go. And then you can trim your, your um, ribbon tails if you want those trimmed off a bit. Probably look better if they're trimmed off a bit. There we go. And then what I always like to do on the my the ends of my um, twine, when I'm using twine or um, linen thread, is I like to separate the fibres on the end and just rough them up a bit for a bit of extra, extra texture. But you don't have to do that bit if you don't want to. You can just leave them cut um, blunt on the end. I just always like to do that. There we go. Beautiful. And there's the first card. That's how easy it was to make. Isn't that beautiful? And, you know, um, it's obviously a sympathy card. Sorry for your loss. Um, and just really beautiful, simple card. And often with sympathy cards, that's what you want. You don't want anything too fussy or, you know, too fiddly or anything. Oh, wait, we forgot the embellishments. We need to add some embellishments. So, yeah, for sympathy cards, like that is just beautiful for an elegant sympathy card. Let's add a few little blings though, before we finish off. And you can add them. Oh, I just lost the backing of that one. Let's see if I can pick that back up. Whoops. I picked up the sequin without the backing on it, without the adhesive backing on it. Let's try that again. There we go. It's like a little glue dot. And then you can just pop these down basically wherever you want to on here. Put a couple down there and we'll pop one up here. There we go. How many have they got on there? One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's pop a few more. And one over there. There we go. Beautiful. So there we go. Ah, oh, thanks, Tracy. Yeah, Tina Marie likes my tips. Awesome. All right, so that's the first one done. Really simple, really quick. Let's move on to the second one. So let's do one of the green ones, the Just Jade ones. So we'll take out one card base, one floral bloom, and one bumblebee strip. Oh, there's my other bumblebee strip. I better keep them all together. Oh, now what I was going to say is make sure you keep your card with the corresponding envelope so that um, they stay together. And sometimes what I like to do is I like to fold the envelope back over the opposite way 
and then pop it inside, pop the card just sitting inside it like that so that they're together as a pack. So when I put them away, I've got them all together so they don't get um, lost. I mean, you could, you could do it like that as well if you wanted to, but yeah, just so that they're all together as a set. All right, so for this one, let's start with folding our card base. So I think this is the one I did earlier. So just burnish the edge there. Now this one's going to be a portrait, uh, sorry, a landscape or horizontal card. Yeah, nice and quick, isn't it, Kathleen? Really fantastic. Okay, and so we've got our um, bouquet piece and our um, strip here. Now, we've also got to stamp our sentiment, so we might do that first. So let's pop these bits to the side and we'll bring in our sentiments again with the foam mat. This time we're going to use... Um, I'll always be here for you. So we'll remove that one. Actually, we can pop the other one back now because that will have dried. So let's put that one back so that we don't lose that. I really like that um, the font in this stamp. The sorry for your loss is really beautiful. And we've got the same font in the word always on this one as well. Now with the photopolymer stamps, if you've got one that's a little bit longer, um, because they are flexible and pliable, you kind of don't want to get um, a bit of an arc on it. You want it to be straight. If it's meant to be straight, some of them might have a bit of an arc on them and it might be how they're meant to be, or you might purposely want one, then that's fine. But if you want it to be straight as it's meant to be, just lay it down, let it relax, and then pick it up with your block. Okay, then we'll give this one a really good clean as well, like we did with the other one. Let's move that to the side for a moment so I don't splatter any water. Give it a good squeaky clean. Dry it off on our grid paper. And then we're going to stamp that onto using our mossy meadow. Just make sure I've got that up the right way so I can line it up. Good, and we're going to stamp that down onto our um, rectangle label and we're just stamping that in the middle, I think, are we? Yes, just in the middle. Now, just beware that the always has a long, uh, a tall and a long letter, so the L and the Y. So you're kind of going to be stamping your sentiment more towards the top so that the Y will fit in. So the smaller words won't sort of be centered top and bottom of your um, label. They're going to be sitting a little bit higher, but that's how it's designed to be. There we go. Beautiful. So there we've got our three sentiments for that one. And then you'll notice that you've actually got some spare labels in this set as well. So that if you have any boo-boos with your stamping, you've got a few spares there. All right, we'll give that a clean so that that doesn't stain. Okay, we'll pop that out ready to use. Be careful that that ink is dry. I don't want to smudge that. Okay, so let's go back to our instructions and check. You can go if you're if you're good to go just from looking at the image, then certainly do that. If you're um, if you're confident to go just from the image, you can. But if you're unsure or you're new to card making, then go from your instructions. Um, okay, so let's have a look and see. We've stamped our image. We are up to step four. Add gold foil piece vellum and die cut pieces to the card using adhesive dots. Okay. And linen thread. Do we have linen thread on this one? Let's have a look and see. I don't think there's linen thread on this one. I think it's only on the doily one that we just did, the gold doily one. Yep, it is. 
adhere stamped labels and floral bouquet dies with dimensionals add sequins yep it's really easy to put these ones together okay so this strip this bumblebee strip is going to be adhered flat to the card front so i'll pop a bit of adhesive on that There we go. Oh, I got some on my desk. Let me just get that off before that adheres to everything else. All right, so I'm going to adhere this up from the bottom a little bit. Uh, and it's going over to the right a little bit as well. So I reckon, according to the image, it looks about there like that. So just try and get that straight. Okay, so it's going a little bit to the right. Hey, Glenda, how are you going? Great to have you with us. Okay, and then with the floral bloom, this one is going up on dimensionals. So let's pop that up. There we go. All right, so remove those backings. Oh, I'm doing it with my fingernails rather than my take your pick tool. I normally remove them with my take your pick tool. <laughs> All right, and then that's going to be adhered over here, like so. There we go. And then we have our label. So our label is going to overlap the flowers a little bit and then um, overlapping this um, rectangle piece as well, or designer series. It looks like designer series paper, but it was just a die cut piece. Um, so. This part is going to be up on dimensionals, but this part where it's overlapping the flowers is going to be adhered just with a bit of glue or a bit of tape. Um, you can use your stamp and seal or tear and tape. So to know where I'm going to do that is I'm just going to flip that over so I can see where that's going to lay. And that'll show me where, um, actually it's going to go in a little bit from the edge like that so that we've got a little bit of the um, bumblebee just showing here at the edge okay so then that'll show me where I can put my dimensionals where it's not we don't want dimensionals sitting on top of the flowers okay the dimensionals need to be attached to the green card base so we'll pop two dimensionals down there and then I'll just use my stamp and seal to put a little bit of glue or a little bit of adhesive just here on the end. Or you can use your uh, multi-purpose liquid glue or whichever adhesive you would like to use. I'm just going to put a bit on there. There we go. Oops, better remove the backings of my dimensionals. Then that way, that'll sit nice and flat. Like so. There we go. And then we'll add some of our bling. Let's add a bling up here and a bling down here. Could make a song out of this, but I won't. I won't sing on camera. <laughs> you might all leave me if I do that. <laughs> there we go. So that one is done. Now, if you wanted to, if you had, um, now you could leave that just as it is. That's beautiful just as it is. If you have one of our Wink of Stella glitter brushes, you could go over the flowers and give them a bit of a sparkle, which I might do a little bit later. Um, but you certainly don't need to. That's just an added step I just thought of just then. Um, but yeah, they'd look really pretty if they were a little bit sparkly as well. So there we go. So that's our second card done. We are doing well. We're doing, we've done two cards already today. So there's our envelope. Let's just fold that back that together see that goes beautifully with the pink flowers the rococo rose flowers and then that's another one done and we're going to get our third one done today too we're getting three cards made today that's amazing i never do three cards in my lives all right so we want our rococo rose base we've got our flowers so we need one of each of those Oh, is that one? Yep, yeah, that's one. There we go. Um, oh, hang on a minute. Yep, that's right. That's two there. And we're going to need one of those sheets. And we'll need one of our vellum frames. 
And this time we don't need the, the, um, the labels because we're using the stickers instead. Okay, so these ones can be put to the side. Okay, let's do our base first. Move our little flowers to the side. Fold our card base. Burnish the fold line. <laughs> Tina Marie said she would never leave me. Even if I sing. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Now, this one is also going to be a landscape card. So turn that around landscape. And we're going to adhere our vellum piece. Now, with vellum, it is opaque, which means you can actually see through it. So any adhesive that you put onto the back of that, you're going to be able to see unless you're able to um, hide it. So if you wanted to use those little glue dots that came in your kit, you could pop a little glue dot behind some of the gold leafy bits that you won't, where the gold leafy bits will hide those glue dots or you can put adhesive on the reverse side where it's going to be covered up by the flowers which is what I'm planning to do however I noticed with this vellum it's a little bit curly so I might even use some of those little glue dots or I could use some of my own larger glue dots it is a little bit curly so I think it will be a great idea to use some glue dots on those corners so let's I'll just turn that over and move the card away. Actually, I'm going to put the card back under there so that I can see it a bit better. It was white on white. It's a bit difficult. So I'm going to use some of these little glue dots now. Let's just peel some of them off. And I'm going to pop some of them behind some of these. Um, now, these are only quite small, so you might want to add a few of them in different places but yeah pop them behind where the leaves are so that they're not going to be able to be seen through to the front Whoop. it's great that this vellum has got this beautiful print on it that we can do this we can hide these um these glue dots and what i'm going to do i think i'm actually going to put another one here i think i'm going to put one on each side as well as in the corners just because it does seem particularly curly this one and probably too because this has been printed on i would think too is making it a little bit more curly than the standard vellum that lays usually fairly fairly flat okay and then I'm going to pop another one up in the corner where we're going to have the flowers. So if I flip that that way, it's going to be up in this corner. So I'll pop one up there where it's going to be hidden and then in the opposite corner as well. I just want to make sure that this vellum is not going to go anywhere. So I want to be sure to put lots, lots of glue dots down just to make sure Put two there and let's put two in the corner there okay all right so I've got glue dots you can see how I've put the glue dots behind those little leafy parts so they're not going to show through and here these are going to be covered up by these little flower elements all right so then the trick is to get the backings off these little glue dots now so we just gently lift the backing off just make sure you've pushed those little glue dots on really firmly so that you can get the backing back off them without lifting the glue dots back up with it and if you have a take your pick tool like I'm using here and you use the um, what I like to refer to as the pokey pokey tool or the paper piercing tool as it's more commonly known um, then you can easily lift those backings off those glue dots you can probably use your nails too if you've got good nails feel free to use your nails And just this takes just a little bit more time and patience just to get those backings off. Um, one thing too with using liquid glue, such as a multi-purpose liquid glue, I find the because it's a wet glue, it does tend to, or well, in my experience, it has tended to um, make the vellum a little bit more curly. So I would recommend using a drier glue. So either um, using the glue dots or using um, 
the stamp and seal or using tear and tape. So yeah, a dry glue is better with vellum. All right, so then we'll just adhere that down with hopefully an even border around the edges. There we go. All right, let's just move those backings from all those little glue dots. They're very handy, those little glue dots. And then just give that a nice firm press. Now you probably can see, or you can probably tell that we can see the glue dots here in the corners but we can't see the other ones around the edges because those that gold leafing design is actually hiding them, which is perfect, which is what we want. All right, and then we're gonna pop up our flowers. Now our flowers on this one, I think are actually sitting flat because then the letter, the right, the um, sentiment is going to go over the top of it, yeah. So this one is going to go up in the top corner. So I'm going to add a little bit of my stamp and seal to the back of that one. Again, being careful not to put wet glue onto the vellum because you don't want to cause it to curl. Whoops, hang on, I'm losing my tape. I'm being a bit being a bit feisty with my tape. It's starting to come off. There we go. All right. So we'll just pop that up there in the corner like so. So add a little bit of an angle. That right about there I think that looks about right and then we'll do the next one down the medium size one we'll do the same in the opposite corner yellow flower to the left there we go so we'll pop that one down there oh, put that in a bit more Okay, then we're going to put add this one at the end after we have done the, um... oh, you thought the little white dots were sequins, Jenny. Yeah, no, they're actually, the black ones were the sequins. The white ones are glue dots. They're little mini glue dots. They're smaller than our regular glue dots and they've got um, backing paper on them. <laughs> Um, you do the hokey pokey and you turn around. Yes, you do. <laughs> All right. So then the suggestion was to remove so that your stickers don't tear when you're removing them. The suggestion is in the kit to remove this um, negative piece of your stickers first. So I'll just move this to the side while I do this because I want to hold this down flat. So if you very carefully, it'll just lift a corner and then take off all of this backing sticker part. And you can cut it and do it in sections if you want to. But just do that very carefully so that it just leaves your sentiments. There might be some added bits in between. And we've got three languages here. So I think we've got um, French, English and German. There we go. So this is all sticky, sticky, sticky. So you never know, you might find a use for that. In fact, the smaller black pieces, perhaps you can, or the larger sections, I should say, of black sticky backed something you might be able to find use for. I wouldn't suggest putting it through your punches though, because it's sticky and it's gonna cause your punches to stick. All right, so now, so we're using the thinking of you. I'm just gonna remove those other background bits and all of the little pieces in between the sentiment that we don't need. So we'll just remove all of those bits first. This was the suggestion in the kit just to stop the stickers from ripping when you're removing them um, because they are quite a large sticker and the whole sentiment is um, attached as one sticker. Let's do that with it on a flat surface. There we go. I think it should be right. Oh, maybe I better move. I better remove them. So if you just bend it slightly, it'll pop up like that. And that's the easiest way to get them out. And don't forget the middles of your O's and your F tail. 
So the F just popped up on its own, so that's going to be okay. But I'll get the centers. Oh, and the G as well, the center of your G. Remove all of those little bits. This is probably the hardest part of the whole project is just um, removing the sticker. <laughs> and it's just a sticker. So that goes to show how easy it is. All right, so when you're lifting up your sentiment sticker, just again, curl back your paper from the sentiment and let that just lift up. Now, if you're handling it, if you're picking it up by hand, just be really, really careful. I always like to use a tool to lift it to help me to um, keep it straight. I'm just not sure how that's gonna work with this one because it is really a large sentiment. Might need to ease it up. It's a big one. Now, if you find it too difficult to manage all in, in one piece like this, you probably could cut um, the sentiment. You could cut the different words apart if you find that really difficult to use in that way. Okay, now it is stuck to my fingers. <laughs> Just be really careful handling it. It's a bit delicate, this one. There we go. All right. Okay, now I'll try and get it on my take a pick tool so that I've got it all. There we go. And we're just going to lay that across the card like so and just gently place that down. And I'll just maneuver my O out a little bit. There we go. There we go. Now we'll give that a really good push. And if you have, have any French or German friends, you could perhaps do this in um, the French or the German. Or perhaps you're watching from overseas and um, you are from those countries and you would use those other sentiments. All right, beautiful. And then with your last little bloom, you can um, pop this up on a dimensional. So let me just take a dimensional, pop that one up. And we're going to pop that one up here over on the side of the T. Oh, let's just turn that around. There we go, like so. And then, does this one have bling? Oh, I don't think this one has the bling. You could add bling if you wanted to, because there's, mm, I wonder if there's enough bling. This one doesn't have the bling. So one, two, three, and that one's got five. So that's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one might not need the bling because if you use a bling on this one, then you might not have enough for the other cards. So you could certainly add it at the end if you've used all of the sequins on the other cards and you've still got some left over, then you could come back and add some to this. But otherwise, keep the sequins for the other two um, designs of the cards. Okay, so that is the third one done. Beautiful. So we have this other sentiment here as well that says sharing in your sorrow, thinking of you and wishing I could be there to hold your hand, which is really beautiful. I think that um, with the thinking of you and that I'll always be there for you, you can certainly use that for lots of different um, occasions, lots of different ways of just letting people know that you are thinking of them, that you love them, that you care about them. Um, and so it does, these two particularly don't need to necessarily be a condolence card, whereas the other one is specifically a condolence card if you're using that sentiment, sorry for your loss. And then this stamp here would be great for the inside. So why don't we go ahead and stamp the inside now of this one with that other um, beautiful greeting. And we'll just swap this over. And we'll have a look to see what the greeting or the sentiment looks like when it's um, stamped. All right, so pop that one on the block. I've got that upside down. All good. Give it a clean. Give it a squeaky clean. I'm pressing quite firmly on my chamois because I want to make sure that... Um, the big sentiment could go on the inside. The thinking of you one, Tina? Is that, that the one you meant? All 
All right, so let's bring back in our mossy meadow. And let's make sure we stamp this up the right way. Okay, so let's line that up and just, oh, I've got a little bit of extra ink on the edge of my block there. Let me just wipe that off. I don't want to get that on my card. Must have been a little bit heavy handed with my, now I like to put my sentiments a bit towards the top so that I've got room to write my personal message at the bottom. Oh, there we go. Isn't that beautiful? Sharing in your sorrow, thinking of you and wishing I could be there to hold your hand. Oh, that's beautiful. So that'd be great to send to somebody if you're not able to, um, you know, see them. Um, oh, the one I'm doing now. Yes. Yes, that's what I was doing. I was popping it on the inside, Tina. Yep. Yeah, so it's a beautiful sentiment, that one. All right, so we'll give that one a clean. And then you've got um, the other stamps here as well. So you've got the big floral bloom, which is like um, this one. It's like a smaller version of that one. You've got the stamp there. So then you could stamp that, use that for other projects and stamp that and then color that in. Um, and then you've got these tiny little flowers as well. So you could even pop those tiny little flowers. You might like to pop them, stamp them on the corners, on the inside of your card or something. And there's some little leaves as well that you can stamp. Um, yeah, so lots of things that you could do with those. But it's great that you get that additional stamp there as well that you can use um, in your own way. In fact, what would be really nice, it's probably too late now, but um, you could perhaps stamp that in a really light colour. So perhaps a stamped off um, Sahara sand or um, something like that and stamp that very lightly in the background behind your sentiment and then stamp your sentiment over the top um, just to give an added, you know, an added oomph to your card but yeah lots of different things that you can do so that is the three cards from the bouquet of hope stamp set uh sorry paper pumpkin kit so let's bring those back in and show you so that one goes with that one that one went with that one and this one which was the envelope that went with that one where did i put that now oh it's the yellow one the bumblebee. There we go. So let's pop that one in the middle. So there's the three different cards that come in your kit. And you can make three of each of those with this kit. Oh, can you see all of those? It's hard to get them, fit them all in camera. Aren't they beautiful? Really, really beautiful. And it's lovely to have um, a paper pumpkin kit for a different theme. Um, I've not seen, I mean, I'm, we only, globally, we only get the occasional paper pumpkin kit because in North America, they actually get month, they can subscribe to get monthly paper pumpkin kits, um, but that's only in North America. In the other parts of the world, we only get them as a special um, one-off every so often, a couple of times a year. And so I just thought that it was really great to have a kit that had a different focus um, this time. So really great to send uplifting sentiments to people. And um, I think these are just so beautiful. And they're even more beautiful in person, I have to say, um, rather than in the, um, in the brochures and things. They're much more beautiful in real life. But if you would like to get one of these kits, they're only $37. As I said, they don't come with a block. So if you need a block, you love the pink one, Tina Marie. Oh my goodness, what's happening? Tina Marie doesn't normally like pink, but she likes the pink one. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, if you don't already have a block, be sure to grab a block if you're getting this kit um, so that you can have a block for your stamps as well. But yeah, only $37 here in Australia. Um, also to... The kits are great to use as a gift as well. If you have someone's um, birthday coming up or Mother's Day is coming up, you might even like to buy one of these paper pumpkin kits to give to your mother for Mother's Day or your grandmother or auntie or whoever is in your family. Um, 
So yeah, so go to my online store via my blog. Go to mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com. Click up on the um, shop button at the top on the left hand side of the screen. Remember to use my host code so that I can send you a thank you gift. And remember that if you are purchasing the kit, you will need a block for your stamps as well. And remember that I send gifts to anyone who orders over $50. So if you're purchasing this kit and it's only $37 and you want to bump it up to over $50 for, um, to receive a thank you gift from me, then perhaps think about throwing in um, some adhesive. So if you need to top up on your adhesive or perhaps you need to top up on some cardstock or some envelopes, um, just pop something else in your order to bump it up over the $50 and then I can send you a thank you gift, which I would love to do. So um, yeah, I hope you really liked those. All right, so let me um, flip the camera up and I think once I finish filming, I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of these in the kit as well. All right, so let me just cover up my camera and I'll flip that up so that I can say goodbye to you face to face. So just a moment. Oh, Tina Marie, there's a message there for you. Brooke says, Tina Marie, Elliot, Brooke says, oh, oh, because you said you liked pink, Tina Marie. Brooke's surprised that you like pink. <laughs> she knows you don't normally like pink. That's funny. She's like, oh, what? She likes pink. Okay, now my camera is a bit low now. There we go. Oh, oh, look at my face. It's so red. I must be warming. I do still have my cardigan on. <laughs> so I hope you really liked those cards. Let's see if I can hold them up now. One, two, three. I think the pink one is my favorite as well. There we go. Let's see if I can hold them up there. Oh, let's not cover that one. There we go. Do you like them? Aren't they beautiful? They came out really, really well. And that vellum, that vellum, that printed vellum is just so beautiful. Love it. So, oh, I might add some Wink of Stella now too. But if you don't have a Wink of Stella, of course, you don't need to do that step. But I just think it will add a little bit of extra pizzazz. So, um, I hope you all really like that. Oh, Tracy likes the kit. Fantastic, Tracy. I'm glad you like it. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, so remember that it's great for a gift as well. Mother's Day is coming up, um, so keep that in mind as well. Now, this um, Bouquet of Hope Paper Pumpkin Kit is only available while supplies last. So if you do like it, don't wait because it might go um, and you'll be really sad if it went and you had wanted it and you missed out. So don't wait, um, grab a hold of it while you can. If you've got any questions about anything, please let me know. And remember, we've got our brand new catalog. And if you don't already have a demonstrator that you're working with um, and you would like one, then please get in contact with me and I'd love to get one out to you. Um, again, remember that you can get all of these products in here um, at a discount. If you join, you'll get a 20% discount. So wouldn't that be awesome to purchase those beautiful new products um, at a cheaper price. So um, ask me about joining my team if you're interested in that and any of the products in the pre-order, the demonstrator pre-order, you can pop into your um, starter kit, which is super exciting. So you can order them like now by joining. So let me know. Um, oh, Tina Marie's just done the sums. She's, well, actually sort of. She said $37 divided by nine cards is cheap cards. So there you go. So it is great value, this kit. So look out for that. Our beautiful bouquet of hope. So it says February 2021 because that's when it was available in North America, but globally it's available now in April. Okay, so paper pumpkin, look out for that. Beautiful, beautiful kit. And if you have any questions, oh, Glenda said she's already orders, ordered hers and hers is still on its way. Well, you'll love it when you get it, Glenda. It's beautiful. So if you have got any questions or there's anything that you need help with, please get in contact with me and let me know. Um, you can contact me via my email, which is 
similar to my blog, it's Mandy's Papercraft Creations at gmail.com. So if you'd like to get in contact with me, or you can also send me a Facebook um, Messenger message. Yes, send me a message through Messenger. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> so have a great week, everyone. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much for being with me today. Remember, if you're watching on my YouTube channel and you haven't already subscribed, be sure to subscribe and click on the bell, um, little bell icon so that you'll get notified of all my future um, videos that I post. And thank you so much for being here and thank you for coming along to my YouTube channel as well. So have a great week, everyone. Take care, stay safe, enjoy the beautiful weather. And I will see you at the same time, four o'clock. Australian Eastern Standard Time, no daylight savings anymore, very sad, um, next Monday. I'll see you then. Bye. Oh, I forgot to say happy crafting. Bye.